Just worship with us, church. I got a new name written down in glory today. Jesus is mine. Just welcome him into your place this today.
So good to be with you this morning. We just welcome from the main campus to the e-campus and to give God glory and give God praise. And I'm just so thankful as we call upon the name of the Lord today on this Sunday morning. Isn't it awesome that we know that the Lord is in control of it all and that we're to lean upon Him? He has directed us to go out into all the world and to do what? Well, he said in Mark 16, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we recognize that there is a message that we have commissioned upon our hearts, upon us serving the Lord and being obedient to his call, of the message that we can make what the word even emphasizes as a clarion, clarion call. And being able to go out into the highways and the hedges. <clears throat> I found myself through the coronavirus and even through the uh, things that are happening around our nation right now of so much of the unrest that is going on, <clears throat> I've had to pull myself aside. The Lord, many times, we need to stay focused on Him. So the Lord, many times... I feel a drawing of the Holy Spirit. I feel Him calling. And for me, I feel that's to pull aside. So that's to really just turn off the things that could get our minds in so many other places right now that we need to focus because we need to reach your children. We need to reach your children's children. We need to reach the thousand generations that the blessing that we share out of numbers so often of the word of the Lord, of what we call the priests or the priestly blessing, being able to do, but I found myself being put aside. And that the Lord being so special, let me encourage you, why not find those times now instead of being so brought into so much things that can overwhelm you, why not pull aside at that a place and just be in the presence of the Lord, would you? And just let Him be your strength and let Him be your focus and let Him be what He is able to see you through right now because we have an urgency. We have an urgency. And I know it sounds preachy, but let me just say it one more time. We have an urgency today to be up and about the Father's business to go out into the highways and the hedges and to compel them to come in. I'm not just talking about even when our houses have to be empty, we still go out and compel them to come in because it's not to come necessarily into the houses or on the property. It's to to compel them to come into the presence and to the fold and to the kingdom of God and to know the Lord is our Lord and Savior. That's what this is all about. And so that's what we're doing today. So in this message this morning for the next few minutes, I want to take us into the Word of the Lord. I want to speak this morning. I know for this past Wednesday evening, the Lord had me to speak on spiritual warfare because we definitely know that it is moving in a rapid pace in this day in which we live. But we also recognize in this day that there's a lot of brokenness out there, isn't there? There's a lot of situations out there and in people's lives from a physical direction, from a mental mental direction, even a financial direction. There's so much going on. So we recognize this morning of an urgency that we are able to say to the Lord today, not my will, but your will be done. I'll be honest with you, I'm on the verge of tears this morning. As I step into this message, the Lord, as He touched my heart through the night, He just hasn't released me as I come to bring this message today to you. So I encourage you that you would just come right now in that place of agreement with me, that we would be able to go into His presence. And the title of this is Broken Whole, W-H-O-L-E. Isn't it awesome that in a place of brokenness 
that through the Lord you can be whole, to know that He can make everything complete. Well, let's start in some scripture, shall we? In Psalm 34, verse 18, it says with these words, so think about it with me, Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Let's back up and reread that again, would you with me? The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. So the Lord is near to who? The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. That almost sounds with a why. But the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. But then he explains it by saying, and save such as have a contrite or a humble spirit. I have said in preaching for many years that we do not need to wait till the Lord humbles us, but we need to approach the throne of God this morning in a humbleness, in a sincere, in an open heart, even if it's broken. Even if it seems that we are at a place that we're wondering, Lord, where is the next step? Or how do we continue? Well, to me, there are answers in God's Word as well of what the next step and what we should continue to do. And so if you're looking from the Lord's direction, there is an answer in those areas. But what we need to understand is that the Lord is near this morning to that broken heart. He saves such of us who have a contrite spirit. So let me move to another verse in Psalms of Psalms chapter 147 verse 3. Because it tells us what happens to the broken hearted from the Lord this morning. Psalm 147 Verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isn't that what the Lord is able to do today? By fulfilling what was foretold, Jesus came as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. He grew into manhood, but He is the Savior of the world, and He sacrificed His life as a lamb and died on the cross. But before going to the cross, the Bible says He was wounded for our transgressions, does it not? He was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement was upon Him. So there was a move of a healing virtue by those stripes that He bore on his back for us and the blood that he shed of the power of. So we recognize that the Lord is here to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up their wounds. So then I take us into Isaiah's writing of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Because the prophetic word and then the fulfilled word, I have touched on this quite often here lately. It just seems like the messages are connected one with the other right now, almost as if in a journey that I bring to the pulpit, it seems to almost connect from somewhat of a previous scripture of a that I just previously preached. And then here it says in Isaiah 61, 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is a on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal what? The brokenhearted. We're talking about broken but whole this morning. To proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of the prison to those who are bound. So when Jesus started his ministry in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, we find the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He's reading, in other words, Jesus is from Isaiah's writing of where we just read to you from. 
And then he finished it by saying to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, there it is, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. I feel this morning God is speaking to ones to heal a broken heart. We've gotten caught up in, in the, there's marriages that are in trouble. It seems like with this pandemic of the virus that is going on, it's just fueled the flame to all the different situations. It seems like that domestic violence has been on the rise because of all the ones that's been shut in. It seems like that physical abuse in ways and even sexual abuse of, of sexually abusing children is on the rise. It seems like that suicide is on the rise. It seems like all of these things are. But i got to tell you, when things are rising, when the Bible says, when the enemy comes in as a flood, God raises up a standard. And I need to tell somebody this morning that God is bigger than all the brokenness that's going on around you because our Lord is able to be not only near as he said but he's able to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Hallelujah. He is not only near to the broken heart but he moves in to heal. He moves in to make whole. He moves in to give you a completion today. That's what this is all about for me. I understand there are a lot of things that are on our minds and on our hearts, but when I get to the Lord and say, God, look and see where you need me to be, then I find out that I don't need to be sidetracked with a lot of things right now because the Lord is for you. He doesn't have any big eyes or little U's. God has no respecter of person, church. He is in this place to move your mountain. He is in this place to exalt your valley. He is in this place to make a way so the crooked places could be straightened. And even those rough places, plain, that is what God is here to do. That's what this is all about. That's what He's wanting to bring in a wholeness of the midst of your brokenness help me today father hallelujah 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 glory to god i worship you jesus lord that's what this is all about to me hallelujah hallelujah lord there's ones that's weary lord we've lost ones around this world Lord, to so many different things, not just to a coronavirus. Of course, we have lost many to that. But to many different things, Lord, we have seen, Father, so much it seemed destruction in people's lives. Lord, in their mental health and their stability of life. Lord, that they could be able to job market, God. We are coming to you right now in the middle of this message, knowing, Father, that you are the healer to all things. You are the Savior, Lord, setting people free. You are still the one to reach out, God. Holy Spirit, we are here, Father, for you to move out into hearts and lives, God. Someone that is just being able to log on or connect to, Lord, in this message this morning. Perhaps someone that was just surfing the web and they opened up at this moment, Lord, and you're doing it because you love them and you're here to give them a wholeness in the midst of their brokenness today. Lord, I need you in this message this morning. I need you in this message today. I need your word, Lord, to be fresh and alive as we have already stepped into it. But I sense you, Holy Spirit, move into this place and do your work right now. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm praying for families right now. I'm praying for marriages right now. 
I'm praying for those of you that are wrestling with it. I'm speaking to the spirit of suicide right now. That you've got to break your hold on that individual. That is God's property. That is God's vessel. They've been made in God's image. And I'm here claiming for you, enemy of their soul, right now to leave that place, let that home be free of your presence and let it be filled with the glory of God and let the presence of the Holy Ghost just right now saturate everyone in those homes, everyone in the hospital rooms, everyone that is watching this down the road as they're driving. Lord, that you will make your will and your will to be perfect perfected hallelujah 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 glory 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 does anybody sense his presence with me thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus i'm trying to get the tears out of my eyes so i can read scripture holy 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 father hallelujah hallelujah thank you holy ghost you got to understand church this is what it's all about to be is to reach souls. It's nothing more, it's nothing less. It is just to reach souls for Jesus Christ. It is knowing that He is here for you. Don't get comfortable stay at home watching church off of the tube. Don't get comfortable just coming to church when these doors, as they seem to be opening back up, and we are starting what we're calling the relaunch program and making those steps back in or stepping back in. Don't let it become about the building, the facility, the grounds anymore. Don't let it become about those things that seem to sidetrack and plateau. Don't let it become, don't let it just be home because it's easier where you could sit in your pajamas and you can be relaxed don't let it be where you say well hey I can just be able to stay home and be able to work for the Lord from here the Bible said forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and I'm not just talking about the buildings here I'm talking about me and you you know what the most important thing is that we'll get out of your homes we'll get out of these buildings and we'll get out of the highways and the hedges That's where the Lord is looking for us to be, for His message, for His call, for His word of truth. Let in our light so shine, being made whole in the midst of brokenness, as this message is so direct in us today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Let me just highlight in Matthew's writings. Matthew chapter 24, verse 43. But know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. From a spiritual perspective, this verse is speaking about that we need to be watchful. What has your vision What has your attention today? It better be watching and looking and being sober for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what His Word is directing us to be because it said here, let me repeat it. It even started out to me with strong words. Have you ever heard somebody in the way that they started out saying something to you that you knew they were wanting your undivided attention? That, they, that you knew they were wanting you to hear this message very clear of the next few words, what they had to say. That's the way that the Lord started this verse off. Look at it. Matthew 24, verse 43. But know this. Wouldn't that get your attention if somebody was standing there in front of you said, but you better know it, you better get this, but know this. That if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Are you watching this morning? Are you watching for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ by reaching out for lost souls? I'm here to tell you, aren't you glad that Jesus did not deny the thief on the cross? that was there in his sins? Aren't you glad that even the Father was able to impact so many down through the ages? 
Aren't you glad that during a brokenness there was a wholeness? Think about it with me. For instance, you remember the lady by the name of Ruth? who was raised in the land of Moab, didn't know anything about the true and living God till a lady with her husband and two sons entered in because they had a famine going on in their home of Bethlehem and they wound up in this land where Ruth lived. In other words, they came in to their place of living. But when they came in, Ruth and another lady of Orpah met the sons, fell in love with them, and got married. And they got acquainted with their mother-in-law, Naomi. In the writing of Ruth, it became very apparent to me that all of a sudden, we begin to see something. Ruth started recognizing, to some degree, that there was a lacking. There was something that became filled in a place of void in her life that came through Naomi and her family, not just only Mary and her son, because it says that the day came when the two sons of Naomi died. In other words, Ruth and Orpah became widows. And even Naomi herself lost her husband, and all three of them, think about it, was widows. And then in that place, the day came that Ruth, or that Naomi heard that the famine had ended and there was bread back in the house of Bethlehem, which Bethlehem meaning the house of bread. So what I hear from the word of the Lord is that Naomi is heading back and she sends word and she speaks to her two daughter-in-laws and saying, you go back to your families, I'm heading back to my home. But something was taking place in the life of Ruth. There was a wholeness that she was not going to let go of. Is anybody with me? She knew that she had experienced brokenness as a widow. But there was something that in the midst of the brokenness was giving her a wholeness that she had connected with through Naomi, her mother-in-law. My goodness. Because when Naomi had shared with them, Ruth had something to say. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 14, Ruth chapter 1 verse 14. As she spoke to her daughter-in-laws, it said the daughter-in-laws, they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But what happened to Ruth? But Ruth clung to her. Ruth would not let her. Somebody needs to get a hold of this and realize the same God that Naomi was serving, that it connected with Ruth, that Ruth said, I don't know how to get to this God any other way than by holding on to Naomi. I need you to understand, you need to get clinging on to the same. Now we've got the Son of the living God that we can cling to. And His name is Jesus Christ. As Ruth was holding on to her mother-in-law, look at verse 16. Verse 16 in Ruth 1 said, Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you. Do you see it? Or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Somebody needs to say, Lord, wherever you lead me, I will follow. Isn't that what? It sounds like it's making perfect sense to me that the Lord this morning is wanting you and I to follow after Him. Do not get sidetracked. Understand that you are covered by the blood of Jesus. You are a child of the living God. Ruth knew what she had a hold to. Let me finish it. She said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people. But I could almost call this next thing the icing on the cake. 
Because then she said, in your God, my God. In other words, this thing was more than just going to be going with her. This thing was more than just living to where she was going to be living. This thing was going to be more than just the people that she was going back to to be her people. It had a solid foundation of saying what I have found, why your people need to be my people, why I need to be where you are, why I need to live where you live, is because I've come in contact and now I have become acquainted with your God and because your God is now my God. That is what this is all about. On the face of this earth today, people need to experience your Lord and your Savior. How is your example this morning? How are you leading? Hallelujah. It is so interesting to me, so interesting to me, how the word of the Lord began to break it down. Apostle Paul put it in perspective about being whole in a brokenness. He shared about an area in his life that he was struggling with. Who? Apostle Paul? You better believe it. He was human just like you and I. Sometimes I think we think about the apostles and we think about the disciples and we think about the prophets and we think about all of these different ones through the Scripture and we think, boy, what it must have been like to have been them. Really? You think about it. Jeremiah was thrown into a prison. Well, why don't we even back up a little farther? Daniel was thrown in a lion's den. The Hebrew children in a fiery furnace. Huh. Are you hearing me? All of these things. Jonah. We want to run Jonah down a lot of times, but how many Jonas am I talking to this morning? That the Lord has a job, has a, a direction, has steps for you to do, yet you feel like you are incapable and you, like Jonah, are running from instead of running to what God wants you to do today. But God's not giving up. He's not calling it quits on you. Perhaps he, you feel like He has had a well to swallow you like He did Jonah. Whatever your situation, your circumstance has overwhelmed you, but it's in the belly of that situation that you realize when my soul fainted within me in Jonah chapter 2, there's a verse there, I believe it's around verse 7 or 8, but it just says, when my soul fainted within me, then I remember the Lord and I cried out to Him from the belly of that great fish. This morning, Paul put it in his words when he began to read in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 7. He said, Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, in other words, in all these things, man, I'm telling you how wonderful it is at times when I'm in the pulpit and the anointing comes on me and I preach and there's a boldness from the Holy Spirit that just helps me to step into areas that normally would shake me in my shoes to touch and step into. But I need you to understand this morning that God is warning us sometimes to step into areas. Huh. And what we need to recognize, Paul said it like this. He said, a, he, he went on to say, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. And then he even called the thorn in the flesh a messenger of Satan. To buffet me. How many of you feel like you are wrestling almost like the pit of hell? You feel like that you're wrestling demons. Sometimes you feel like you almost are wrestling Satan himself. But you need to understand that why you feel like that those things are coming against you. Again, Paul said, lest I be exalted above measure. That's why those things were coming against me. 
He said, but concerning this thing in verse 8, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, the Lord did, Paul said, the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So all of a sudden, when he come out from saying, okay, Lord, I hear what you're saying, that your grace, you're going to sustain, you're going to get me through this. And he said, therefore, most gladly, how many of us will hear the Lord this morning and our brokenness through, through him being our wholeness and we will trust him enough in the midst of our brokenness. Come on, church. It's called trust in the Lord to where we can join like Paul and say, therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's how you're whole in the midst of your brokenness. Instead of complaining, instead of just feeling like your brokenness is controlling you, you start glorifying God in the midst of your circumstances. That's what the Word of the Lord is trying to get across to you and me this morning. Amen. So he ended this about how he in gladness, as he said, he would boast in the infirmities, and most gladly I would rather, he, he went on to say, and, and that the power of Christ may rest in me. But look at verse 10. So this is his choice. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. You do what, Paul? I take pleasure in infirmities. He didn't stop there. In reproaches. In needs. In persecutions. In distress. But then he made it clear why. He's willing to take pleasure in them. He said because I'm giving this to Christ. He said for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak. Then I am strong. Let me close with this, of God's everlasting love for you and for me. Do you know how His love is for us? Well, let me just put it to you like this. I believe again with all of my heart. It's in Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. It says, What then shall we say to these things? I just shared with you what Paul said to his situations. So what shall we say to our things? Well, he went on to say, If God is for us, who can be against us? Is anybody getting this right now? I know you are. I know somebody needs to say, God is for me, so I am a conqueror. I've said that recently, haven't I? And for you to even chat it in or for you to even speak it, most importantly, you need to declare it more than just chatting it. That's okay, and I don't mind you doing that. And I think it's great to be able to do that. But also from your heart, let it be spoken to who hears. <sighs> The Lord does. He went on to say in verse 32, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him, Jesus was delivered up for us all. How shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is He condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. How many times have you heard me preach that? That Jesus is at the right hand of God and he's doing what? And that he's interceding for us. He's praying for us. That's where we get it from, those verses of Scripture. 
in the word of the Lord that tells us like this. He went on to say, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So if you're broken in any of these ways, let me just tell you, you are whole right now, for He is near and He heals the brokenhearted. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Here's the list. Where does it fall for you? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter yet come on church yet in all things Somebody join with me in the worship of these words. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors. When you hear me preach that and include that in the word of the Lord, it's because it's in the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. How do you know? For I am persuaded that neither death, come on somebody, help me out right now, that neither death, Death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah! From the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's what this is all about, church. Amen. That's what this is all about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. This anointing. You got to help me. Church, this anointing. That's why we can't live under this kind of anointing in a constant poor this body is not an incorruptible body right now this body is not in those areas it's not an immortal thing right now it's coming to be it will be incorruptible it will but it's just corruptible right now so church i just encourage you this morning even though you may be in brokenness you can be whole. I know that doesn't sound right in this day, in this, in, in this society in which we live, but stop looking at everything through the media. Stop looking at everything through everyday life. Look at things through the eyes of the Lord. He said we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Church, Hear the Lord this morning. Hear thus saith the word of God today. I'm not the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a child of the King like you. By confessing our sins, accepting Him, to know that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, for Him to sanctify us and separate us to be a vessel of honor that we through His blood can be pure and holy, not better than anybody else, not purer than anybody else, not holier than anybody else, but to know through Him it is He who sets us free. It is He who sets us apart. It is He who makes us worthy. I am not worthy, but through Him I am worthy. Through Him I am perfect, because I am far from perfect on my own. But on this daily walk with Him, seeking to serve Him to the best of my ability, to the best of our ability, we are able to go forward today. Let me encourage you. As you just receive your healing right now, mentally, physically, most importantly, spiritually. Most importantly, spiritually. Let me tell you, it's great to be 
physically healed. It's great to be mentally healed. It's great to even have financial miracles. It's great to have provisional of uh, those areas provided for us. But what I need you to know, if you don't know Him as Lord and Savior, then all those other things are for naught. There are times in God's Word when He healed ones physically, Jesus did. But anybody remember, He said, go and sin no more. Even when the woman was not condemned, when Jesus said, where are those who condemn you that was called an adultery? And when the Lord said, where are those that have condemned you? And she said, they're not here, Lord. He said, then neither do I condemn you. But then what did He say? Go and sin no more more we have to become a new creation in christ and that has to be upon a daily walk actually it becomes a step-by-step walk not just one step in a day but really every step along the way amen so as we close let me just remind you we have the opportunity to be above and beyond what we could ask or think. Lord, I thank you for laying on the hearts of people today to give like they've never given. Church, they have already showed you, and they could possibly show you again. They could bring this up if they would like to. The ways, I believe it's four, if not five ways of giving that we have available. I'm encouraging you to give like you've never given because when you give into ways, you all you need to do is just give into the ground. If you plant the seeds of giving into the ground, God will take care and make a way and He will continue to open up the windows of heaven. He said that in Malachi chapter 3. He said, try me and see. He said, try me and see if I will not pour out upon you more of the blessings than you can contain. It will be above and beyond. It will be the overflow of blessings. It's not about the money. It's about obedience. But I'm here to tell you, he said, bring it all. The tithing, the offering into the storehouse of the Lord. You can get upset about it if you would like, but I pray you won't. I pray that today is the day that this will not offend you, but you will say, today is the day that I'm going to step into this. I'm tired of all of this offense. Maybe that's why you feel like I do. I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to take it that that's just worn and out in the money. I believe that we are using it. I don't have nest eggs built up. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm not saying that's not good to have. That's okay if that's your feeling. But the Lord is every time when I continue to give out, He keeps making a way and it gives place for Him to keep meeting the needs. (coughs) Amen? So to God be the glory. God be the praise. And I pray that you will find the greatest doors ahead, and I know they are before you. Because God is for you and not against you. Amen. Thank you for sharing this morning's service with me. I'll be honest with you, I've lost track of time. I hope it's still within the time frame. But God bless you is my prayer as you have taken the journey till we meet again.